back to the shop. Today we're going to go over, you guessed it, how to replace your tail shaft housing on your 4R70W, 4R70E, 4R75E transmissions. Now this procedure, the same basic procedure, also applies to the AOD transmission that this transmission is based off of. Now this transmission is used in a lot of different Ford vehicles and model years and they all have one common fault associated with them. And it's not the gasket right here that leaks fluid, it's not the bushing back here that supports the drive shaft, it's not the seal back here that seals the drive shaft, it's the housing itself. What happens over time from towing and torque loads and stuff like that is the housing right about here starts getting cracks in it, okay? Right here across the bottom is where it attaches to the transmission cross member. So right here it's rigid and solid, but it has to take up all that torque load from the engine and transmission as you drive down the road, every time you launch the vehicle, every time you tow the vehicle. So it starts to develop cracks right in this area. So if you start having a leak back here and you think it's the extension gasket housing right here, make sure you look right in this area above these ribs to see if there's any cracks in here. And it won't be just pouring out of there because it's only splashed lubrication back here. And the same thing on the other side can happen on either side depending on where it cracks in the housing here. So today we're gonna show you how to change it out. It's a very simple procedure. You do not have to pull the transmission, but there are a few precautions and techniques I wanna go over so we do it right and we do it safe. Okay, now before we change that transmission tail housing out, let's go over why they are cracking in the first place. So right here you can see the transmission tail housing is cracked and seeping fluid right here causing our mess down below. What you can also see though is why. Right here you can see the tail housing is actually bowed in the center here from what they call rush jacking. And the rush jacking is caused by two dissimilar metals and then we get a salt brine every winter this vehicle goes through creating that corrosion between here and that tremendous pressure upwards right in the center. Now the ends down here, the two ears of this, this tail shaft housing do not move because they're bolted in with these huge bolts on each end. So they're not going to move, but the tail housing is moving up. Therefore, we get the stress fracture right here. Now to prevent this in the future with your new tail shaft housing we're installing today, we're going to put on a thick healthy dose of nickel anti-seize in the bottom of the tail shaft housing. So when you do mount up your transmission mount back to it, it's going to prevent that, that accelerated corrosion in the future. So this, this new tail housing will actually last the life of the vehicle and that's the whole key here to fix it and fix it and be done. So let's go over to the vehicle and get started. Okay, first thing, safety first. You want the rear axle off the ground and on jack stands, as you see here, this way the rear tires and the drive shafts can spin freely so we can go ahead and start pulling off the bolts on there. Not only that, but once that drive shaft is down, the park mechanism to hold the vehicle from rolling away no longer works. So what you want to do is get it off the ground safe and secure so it cannot roll away. Parking brakes don't always work. A lot of times the shoes fall off, the adjustment's out of whack, or they're simply going to get stuck once you use them for the first time and how long. So just put up on jack stands, be nice and safe. At this point, we can go ahead and go to the front up here and you wanna do the same thing. Give us some clearance to work on that transmission up there. Get it on some jack stands in the pinch weld or the uh, frame as it is on this vehicle. This way we have plenty of working room and we can go ahead and start pulling that drive shaft off. Okay, with the vehicle up off the ground, nice and secure, we can go ahead and put our vehicle into neutral, and that's gonna allow us to spin the drive shaft and pull it off of there. So we can go ahead and do that, turn your key back to the accessory position, as far as you can go, so we don't kill the battery. Now, with the vehicle up off the ground in neutral, we're ready to go ahead and start pulling the rear drive shaft off right here. Now, that's retained into the rear pinion flange with four 12 millimeter, 12 point bolts. And it's best to have an impact to just zip these off, spin it around, zip another one off. If not, you may find it's easier to break torque on them with a uh, breaker bar while the vehicle is in park. And then come back and just turn them out by hand with it in neutral. Whatever works for you. 
Now, before doing so, make sure you make a mark like you see here, and that prevents a, a stack up of rust between the two flanges on there. This will make sure it goes back in the same exact spot and prevent any kind of uh, vibrations afterwards. Now, on most vehicles, you just grab the drive shaft and just spin it around to the location you need, and that's all there is to it. If you find that's too hard for you, what you can do is just grab onto the wheels and use the leverage of the wheels to turn the drive shaft. Makes it a lot easier. Just watch out for pinch points on there. Now, on some vehicles like the F 150s, there's a center support for the drive shaft. It's a two piece drive shaft. We're going to have to take that down also. So what you want to do is mark it, just like as you see here, for the location on there so it goes back in the same exact spot, nice and straight, so the drive shaft runs true. What I noted on here is that the I marked the location, but I also noted this bracket and the, the bracket on the frame here were flush on this side. So make sure you note that also. And then this, of course, is our fore and aft uh, marking on there. Now the way these work in general is this side is going to be slotted. This bracket's going to come over. It's going to go through another bolt, but it's going to have a slot in it, okay? So you just have to loosen that one. And this one you need to take out all the way. Up here, you might be able to see that is where all the threads are for the bolts, extra long. Make sure you spray those with some lock, uh, rust penetrant sorry, before you take it out and brush them off if needed so we can get it out of there without breaking anything. Now, if you do have a two-piece drive shaft like this with a hanger in the middle, you want to make sure you take this part down first and then work towards the back and pull the four bolts off on the pinion flange. So we'll go ahead and loosen up the other side. Like I said, just loosen it. It's got a little slot in there. These are 13 millimeter in general. Sometimes they're 15. So we'll just loosen it down like that a little bit. Okay, and then on this side, we'll go ahead and start pulling this one all the way out. Now it's best to support this right here in the middle while you're working down at the other end. Um, what you can do is loosen this one almost all the way, okay? If you don't have a helper, we'll loosen it all the way so there's some thread still holding it in. And we'll go down to the other end and unbolt that fully, let that lay on the ground, and then we'll come back, pull this one last bolt out, a couple threads, and we'll pull this whole thing off. Now there's nothing special about pulling these bolts off in the rear here. You just want to make sure that you're hitting it dead on like this right here so that you don't have any problems stripping the head out of the bolt. We'll just pull them out. Spin it. And a lot of times you can put two right here and you can just get them right away at the same time. Get these out of the way. And let's spin it around so we can get access to these two dead on. Now this last one right here, you're going to want to pull it out all the way, okay? And then we're going to put it back in just a few threads. In case there's plenty of gap and plenty of the gap in there. There we go. Back in a couple of threads. And then we're gonna go ahead and bang the drive shaft off here because it's gonna have a rust bond between the pinion flange and the flange and the yoke here. Now the best thing to use is a three pound sledge like this that will knock it loose within a few wraps on there. And you don't wanna hit it on this side right here because all we're gonna do is load up the cross joint in here. You wanna hit it directly where it's, it's actually bonded to the pinion flange on there. So we'll go ahead and spin it so we have excess, something like this. And it's best to do it on the other side. It's not where the bolt is at currently. So we'll go to this side, give me some room. And we're just going to hit it where it's actually bonded. Just like so. We're not beating the heck out of it. We're just breaking the bond on there. Now at this point, you can get a a pry bar underneath here or really get it loose like that. Nice and loose. Now we can go ahead and pull that bolt out that was keeping the drive shaft from banging us in the head. Then grab it, pull back just a little bit and it'll drop right down. 
little wiggle, and there it goes. At this point, this drive shaft simply slips right out of the end of the extension housing and can go off to the side. If you have a two-piece, like we do, pull the last few threads out of that bolt right there, and you can pick it up from both sides and slide it out of the extension housing. Okay, that looks a little something like this. Back end's already on the ground. Right here, it's gonna come down on our heads. Just make sure you're clear. Pull out the rest of the way. Support it, slide it over, and then it's down and free. At this point, it's pretty heavy, uh, but we're just gonna concentrate on sliding it out of the transmission. Back end can stay on the ground. Now the transmission cross member here is going to be different on each vehicle. It's going to mount to a different lease, like the Crown Vicks have a bunch of nuts, uh, the F-150s have a bunch of through bolts, stuff like that depending on the model and year. Either way, the one thing's going to be the same. Right here in the center where the transmission mount bolts to it, you're going to have two nuts right here. And they're either going to be 15 or 18 or even 13 sixteenths. On this particular truck, they are... 18 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and take them out like I said. Got to find them in here. Pull them out. And nothing's going to happen because it's all just resting on here. Okay, so with those two out of the way, off to the side, we can go ahead and start lifting. Now what I'm using is a regular floor jack and a four by four piece of wood. That's about a foot long. So we can go across the back edge of the pan here where it's strongest. And there's not too much weight to the transmission. Most of it is carried by the engine and the engine mounts. Okay, so you gotta realize that also. It's no big deal if this happens to drop down a little bit while the cross member's off. In reality, the engine mounts will hold it. It's just not good for it. Um, to hang there like that, but it's not going to come crash into the ground. So let's get it in position here Best we can Turn it a little bit And get it supported And like I said, this is the best way to do it Basically free floating there right now It's not attached to the transmission cross member no more And we can really tell when it's actually being lifted and supported. Okay, now if you look up in here, okay, you can see the weight is off the cross member and it's safe to start pulling the cross member off. Here's a better view of how I have it supported. It's not only supported on that back ridge of the pan, it's also supporting on the side ridges also where it's strong on both sides so we don't crush the pan in and they'll support it so what I'll do is I'll show you the removal on this 05 F-150 and on your vehicle it's gonna be somewhat the same same ideas apply there's gonna be an exhaust hanger where it attaches to the, the cross member for support at some point there's gonna be through bolts or nuts that bolt it into the body or frame on this in this case and then a lot of times there's heat shields like this right here that bolt in here also so the same idea applies find the bolts that are holding it in and pull them out the transmission is safely supported at this point but you just need to concentrate on getting this out of the way so I'm gonna get these through bolts out keep your nuts and bolts on the side you're working on now the one thing I can tell you is this cross member can get stuck in there and come out violently and it can be heavy. So what you want to do is put your nuts back on over here to the, in, the transmission mount so if it does fall it's going to catch it for us. There's a bracket here for the exhaust. That's nice and free. 
The heat shield bolts are usually have a big washer on them and they're eight or 10 millimeter. I think these are 10. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna support it with one hand and bang it out. And once it comes up the other, one side like this, it'll kind of hinge on the other side on a lot of these. And you're just gonna have to get it out of there. side all right okay with that cross member out of the way we have even more access underneath here and the next thing you want to do is pull the transmission mount itself off while the housing is still bolted to the transmission the reason being is these bolts on here have a small small head usually it's a 13 mil maybe a 15 if you're lucky and there's tons of loctite on there so you want to break torque on them and pull them out now so go ahead and do that there's one bolt on each side Okay, let's see if this big old Milwaukee Impact can pull these off in one shot on here. Wow, see? Now you see what I'm talking about. These things hold on with a death grip. It's unbelievable. Between the Loctite and the Corrosion, man. They usually don't snap, but man, do they hold. Let me get this one in there. This sucker on this side just will not budge, even with a huge Milwaukee impact. And what happens a lot of times is a lot of the vibration impacting of an impact gets lost in the socket and slop. So you still got to pull a breaker bar out sometimes. This is a new 25 inch snap-on breaker bar, so let's see if we can do it. This is why I say, oh, do it on the vehicle. You gotta do it on the vehicle. Ooh. It's on there nice and secure. Good. Oh, there we go. Wow. I'm telling you. And at this point, this big old Milwaukee should be able to pull it off. Unless the housing is too cracked over here. That might be it also. Okay. And then down comes the mount. Now, when you're pulling down the transmission mount, you want to make sure you know which way it's facing on there. What I like to do is just pull it straight down and put it in the ground. Then when you're going back together, it goes right back up the same way. Reason being is usually these face have to face a certain way to mount up on there correctly. Now this one you can see right there, it says rear on it. You can kind of see it on there. And so this one has a courtesy stamping on it, but a lot of them don't. So just pull it down, okay, put it on the ground, do your work. And then when it goes back up, it goes back up the same way. You can't mess it up. And there it is, free to go. So you just look around the outside, you'll see a bunch of bolts or studs and nuts where it mates up to the transmission itself. They go all the way around, usually not on top though. As you can see here, this one has a nut and stud on it for the um, fuel lines there. But you just start pulling those bolts out. There's no weight, there's no tension. There's nothing else holding it back besides these bolts right here. So let's go ahead and start pulling those off and we'll slide this right off of here without damaging anything inside. Okay, the housing is fully unbolted from the transmission. We have a drain pan underneath it right here to catch any fluid and we're just gonna kind of wiggle and shake to break it off of there. These should have alignment tabs on them. There we go. Flew right off of there. 
Now the one thing you may notice is that your new housing has a big old hole in it back here and you may not have a sensor that goes in back here. The older vehicles had a vehicle speed sensor and a tail housing and a worm drive gear and all that stuff, whereas the newer ones though do not. It's all built into the transmission itself. So you have a big hole back here and nothing to put into it. On your factory housing, it probably looks something like this depending on your model year. It's all plugged off back here with the casting. So what you're gonna need to do, if you don't have a sensor that goes back here, is get this plug from Ford also that kind of just plops right into here and then it bolts up on here. So when doing so, make sure that you put some clean transmission fluid on there. We'll go ahead and work it into there until it pops in. Slide it over, line up the hole. And this, the threads on this housing are quarter inch by 20. So it's an odd thread. Now with this hole plugged off on here, go ahead and look at the inside of your housing to make sure there's no shavings inside of there from the machining process. And then the back side here, the tail housing part right here, you'll notice the internal seal inside of there has grease on it already, so we're good to go there. But just beyond that, right there is the bushing. You wanna put some clean transmission fluid on that, wipe it around inside of there so there's no dry uh, startup on there, I guess you could say when we start taking off for the first time. After that, there's splash lubrication that comes in, trickles in through here, and gets back to it and feeds it constantly. Now once your extension housing is off of there, you wanna go ahead and clean the gasket surfaces on here. You generally shouldn't need any kind of abrasive, like scotch, bright, or anything like that. Just a quick wipe with some brake clean on a rag, get it nice and clean. And then we're gonna take our new gasket from Ford. That is a paper gasket, it does go on dry, but it also has like a RTV inlay or bead on here um, already built in. So as long as our surfaces are clean, we're good to go. So let's kind of lay it onto here. Okay, we'll get it close, like so. And then when we put the housing on, our bolts will line everything up perfectly on there. So got our new housing, it's all ready to go. Just get it up on here. Get the output shaft coming through. Nice and careful. I can go ahead and line everything up on there. Just like so. We can start putting our bolts back in. Now our bolts, if I didn't mention it, uh, should have some kind of sealer on them. Most applications want to, you to use a thread sealant or blue thread locker with sealer and in, built into it. I'll link to everything down below. So what we'll do is just get these bolts in. Now the torque spec on this particular unit is 20 foot pounds. It's gonna be a nice light torque like that. It's literally an extension housing that is there for different uh, configurations. Like in place of this one would be a big old housing on there that extends the transmission out even further for the transfer case on 4x4 models. So it's just, just an extension housing for the output shaft. So it doesn't actually support too much. So we're gonna go ahead and just torque these down. Now me personally, I torque these down to 25 foot-pounds, even though it calls for 20. And there's no sequence, so we're just gonna jump around from side to side. Now with all these bolts torqued down to spec, the paper gasket does have a tendency to compress and therefore you'll lose a little bit of a torque value on there. So what I like to do after we torque everything down and it's compressed is go back through to each one of your bolts and retorque them down. And what you'll find a lot of times is you'll have to turn it another eighth to quarter turn to reach that, tor that target torque spec on here. Tongue twister. And this also makes sure that we went over all the bolts too. Don't miss anything this way. This one's the biggest pain. And we're good to go. At this point, the housing is installed, so go ahead and start building up back around it with your brackets and such that you may have taken off of it on these studs. Get them all back into place on here. 
There it is, like new. Now this extension housing should last the rest of the life of the vehicle. The one thing that I think causes the weakness down here in the ribs and the mounting here is this part right here gets too thin because it starts corroding when it sits against the steel transmission mount and then there's salt and dirt and water that gets into there and just eats away at this, becomes weak and it can crack and, and cause a, you know, weakness in this area. So going back in, it's a good idea to smear a little bit of anti-seize in the bottom side here to keep that from happening. Besides that, the rest of the procedure is the reversal of a removal. I won't get into torque specs going back together because it varies with each model year. Now, once you're finished installing the tail housing, make sure you put the vehicle back into park, okay, before you start letting it down off the jack stands.